Now, what is speed versus velocity? Speed here is just the, this is the formula, total distance over total time taken. Whereas for the velocity, we are looking at the displacement over the total time taken. Now, let's recall that we have already discussed the difference between distance and displacement. Alright, so if you just divide that by the total time taken, if you divide the distance by the time, you will get speed. If you divide displacement over with time, you will get velocity. So to illustrate, let us look at this one. Suppose we have an ant, and the ant, let's say, walks from here, and then let's say, stop here at 7, and then from here, went back up to here. Okay? So, let us first again compute the distance and the displacement because we will be needing this for the uh, speed and velocity. Distance and then displacement. Alright, so um, let's say that all in all, this travel took, let's say, 10 seconds. The time is equal to 10 seconds. Alright, what would be the distance? So first, it covered 7 centimeters. That's your ruler. I will just write 7. And then... From 7 up to 3, that is 4 cm, correct? Alright, so therefore your distance is 7 plus 4 centimeters, so that's 11 centimeters. Whereas for your displacement, what is your displacement class? Remember that you only started here, this is your starting point, and this is now your end point, right? Anyway, so here you will start, you will stop here. What is now the shortest distance from here start to end? What is that? That's equal to 3 centimeters, right? So displacement is equal to 3 centimeters. Therefore, what will now be our speed? So in this case, your speed is just distance over time, right? Distance over time. So it's equal to 11 centimeters over 10 seconds. So 11 over 10 is 1.1 centimeter per second. Whereas for your displacement, uh, for your, I mean, for your velocity, for your velocity here, the velocity is equal to displacement over time. Since your displacement is 3 centimeters over your total time is 10 seconds, so therefore 3 divided by 10, that's equal to 0.3 centimeter per second. Alright? Another example. Try this. Suppose my ant walked this way. Let's say we have from here, from the starting point, 0, and then it went all the way up to here. Whoops, it should be straight, 10, and then it went back to 5 centimeters. Alright? The point is, again, can you imagine what I was just, um, what I am saying? It, it moved 10 centimeters to the right, and then it moved 5 centimeters to the left, okay? So that means that its end point is at this point, all right? What compute for your speed and your velocity? So for the speed, first, what is our distance? Distance, oops, I forgot to mention the time. Suppose the time here, it took him 5 seconds, Five seconds. What is your distance in this case? So that's 10 centimeters plus 5 centimeters. So that is 15 centimeters. 10 
plus 5, right? All over 5 seconds, so that is 15 over 5, so that is 3 centimeters because this is centimeters and then seconds. 3 centimeter per second. What about your velocity? Your velocity is... What is your displacement? Remember that your starting point is here at zero and then you end it here. What is that shortest distance? That shortest distance is 5 centimeters. So your displacement is 5 centimeters over 5 seconds. That's your velocity. So 5 over 5 is 1 centimeter per second. So can you see the difference? The velocity is different from speed. Let us recall in our previous example, this distance here is 4 meters, this distance here is 3 meters, and then this shortest distance here is 5 meters. Alright, now let us compute the speed and the velocity. Our speed is distance over time. Let's say that in both key, of, of course, it, the total time, suppose that the time is, let's say, 10 seconds also. 10 seconds. All right. So your distance is 7 meters and then your time is 10 seconds. So 7 over 10 is 0.7 meters per second. Whereas your velocity is displacement over time. And your displacement, as we have calculated a while ago, that's equal to 5 meters over 10 seconds, your time. So therefore, 5 over 10 is 0.5 meters per second. What about if we have, let's say you have a, a race, right? This is your starting point, but this is also your, the car will go here. This is your starting point and this one will be your end point. Suppose that in a race, the it took the driver, let's say the time is 20 seconds and then this entire this entire track here, the length of that is equal to 100 meters, right? Let's say that is 100 meters. What will be your speed? First, let us compute the distance, right? Distance and then the displacement. What is your distance class? Your distance is the total, the amount that you travel, the total amount is 100 meters. But what about your displacement? Recall that you started here, but you also ended here. So therefore, what is your displacement class? Your displacement is equal to zero. Plugging that in, our speed is distance 100 meters over 20 seconds, so that is 5 meters per second. Whereas for velocity, that is displacement, which is 0 meters over 20 seconds. So therefore, that is 0 meters per second. Again, why is that equal to 0? Why is that equal to 0? Because you started here and you also ended at the same point. Let's consider this example. What is the average speed of a cheetah that sprints 100 meters in 4 seconds? You can just think of it as speed. What is the speed of a cheetah that sprints 100 meters in 4 seconds? What is speed again? Speed is distance over time. And what is your distance here? 100 meters. That's your D. And this 4 seconds here is your time. I plug that in. Distance is 100 meters over time of 4 seconds. 
100 divided by 4 is 25. And then you just copy the units, meters per second. Let us now proceed with acceleration. What is acceleration? Acceleration is simply the change in velocity. And it is given by this formula over here. What is this telling you? How do you get the acceleration? You get the final velocity. Vf stands for the final velocity. Whereas V sub i is the initial velocity. I will illustrate that later. Alright, so let's imagine first what acceleration means. Let's say you have a, um, this is like a ticker tape, okay? Your object goes, moves in this, in this motion. As you can see over here, they are equally spaced, right? Whenever you have something like that, it says that it is moving with constant velocity, alright? So this one is moving with constant velocity. And if the velocity is the same, there is no change. So therefore, no change in velocity. If there is no change in velocity, the acceleration is equal to zero. Whereas in this case here, as you can see here, the distance, it becomes bigger and bigger, right? When you have something like this, this is saying that the object is accelerating, all right? Whereas also here, this is also accelerating. This is also accelerating. But this object here, is accelerating more. Ah, I mean, this object here is accelerating more than this object here. Why is that? Again, look at the distance. It's bigger than this one, right? Okay, when is there an acceleration? There is acceleration whenever first the object speeds up. If you have, I know that, let's say you, you have you have, I, I am assuming that you have experience riding a slide in a swimming pool. And then as you go down, as you go down the slide, you become faster and faster, right? In that case, you say that you are accelerating because you are speeding up. Look at this example there, all right? So when you go down, that's the, down the rope, when, as you go down, you are speeding up. Okay. And there is also acceleration when an object slows down. We say that it is experiencing negative acceleration. So for instance, here, car stops when the brakes are applied. Thus, velocity goes on decreasing. There is also acceleration when the object changes direction. So just like when you are riding a roller coaster, so there is acceleration there. Or when you are about, when you're turning, if you're riding a car and you're turning on a curve, you say that you are accelerating because you are changing your direction.